To keep the air fuel ratio tightly controlled, your engine control unit, or ECU, relies on accurate feedback from the oxygen sensor. When an oxygen sensor begins to fail or drifts out of calibration, it can cause a range of issues including poor fuel economy, sluggish engine performance, failed emissions tests, and even long-term damage to the catalytic converter. There are different types of oxygen sensors used in vehicles today. Narrow-band sensors simply tell the ECU whether the mixture is rich or lean, but not by how much. Wide-band sensors, on the other hand, provide a continuous and more precise signal across a wider range of air-fuel ratios, making them essential for modern engines with tighter emission standards. They are also classified as heated and unheated. Heated O2 sensors typically have three or four wires, two for the signal and one or two for the heater circuit, while unheated sensors usually have just one or two wires, lacking the built-in heater. This extra wiring allows heated sensors to reach operating temperature faster, improving accuracy during cold starts. These sensors are typically built using different materials. Zirconia sensors generate a voltage signal based on oxygen content, while titania sensors change their electrical resistance with varying oxygen levels. A typical vehicle has at least two O2 sensors, one upstream and one downstream of the catalytic converter. With modern cars often using multiple sensors to manage emissions more precisely, upstream sensors, located before the converter, help the ECU adjust fuel delivery and maintain a near stoichiometric air fuel ratio, while downstream sensors, positioned after the converter, monitor its efficiency and health. O2 sensors fail over time due to carbon buildup, oil or coolant contamination, overheating, or simply wear from age and mileage. In this video, we'll walk through several methods for testing these sensors to see whether they're operating properly or ready for replacement. There are several testing techniques that technicians rely on to determine whether a sensor is healthy or starting to fail. Each test reveals different weaknesses in an oxygen sensor system, and understanding how to interpret them is crucial to accurate diagnosis. The first is monitoring the average output voltage signal, also known as live data monitoring. You can do this either with a multimeter for basic voltage readings, or more effectively, through an OBD2 scanner that displays live data as you drive. Before starting the test, always allow the sensor to reach its operating temperature, typically around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, though the ideal performance range is closer to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're using a multimeter, be sure to set it to a range close to 1 volt DC range to accurately capture the sensor's output signal. Depending on the number of wires your oxygen sensor has, the probing method will change slightly. For one and two wire sensors, there's no heater circuit, so we probe the signal and chassis ground directly. While for three wire sensors, which have a heater but no dedicated signal ground, we still use chassis ground. For four wire sensors, use the designated signal ground wire for the most accurate reading. When using an OBD2 scanner, simply navigate to live data, select the oxygen sensor voltage readings, and observe how the signal fluctuates during normal driving conditions. Check the link in the description for a good OBD2 scanner. Four upstream sensors. Those located before the catalytic converter. A good sensor should produce a fluctuating signal that moves quickly between approximately 0.1 volts and 0.9 volts. That fluctuation indicates the sensor is actively switching between rich and lean mixtures. If you're driving and the signal is sluggish, stuck, or not switching at all, then you may be looking at a degraded or failed sensor. But the downstream sensor is different as its main job is to monitor the efficiency of the catalytic converter. Unlike the upstream sensor, it should show a more stable signal. If you notice it mimicking the upstream sensor with rapid voltage swings, it may be an indication that the catalytic converter isn't doing its job or that the downstream sensor itself is faulty. Next is the heater circuit test. Most modern oxygen sensors are heated, meaning they have an internal heating element that helps them reach operating temperature quickly. This test is straightforward and can be performed using a multimeter or a current clamp. With the sensor disconnected, you can measure the resistance across the heater terminals. A typical good heater circuit will have a resistance between within its specification, and this depends on the sensor design. If the resistance is significantly higher or reads open circuit, it means the heater has failed. You can also check the voltage at the sensor's connector while the key is on. You should see battery voltage, 
usually around 12 volts. No voltage at the connector may indicate power not reaching the heater element due to wiring issue or blown fuse. A failed heater circuit can cause the sensor to respond slowly, especially during cold starts, and that can trigger a check engine light. Another powerful diagnostic method is the cross counts test. This test is designed to measure how often the upstream oxygen sensor switches from rich to lean in a given time period. For this, you'll need either a scan tool with graphing capabilities, an oscilloscope, or a specialized tool like the ST05 oxygen sensor tester. In a healthy sensor, you should see several cross counts per second when the engine is fully warmed up and running at a steady RPM. Low or inconsistent cross counts suggest a lazy sensor that isn't responding to changes in exhaust gas composition as quickly as it should. Again, exact numbers can vary, but as a general rule, you want at least 8 to 10 cross counts in 10 seconds on most systems. If any of these tests reveal a problem, chances are your ECU has already detected it and stored a diagnostic trouble code, which can be pulled out with OBD2 scanner. I've created a dedicated video that explains the meaning of common O2 sensor fault codes and how to diagnose them accurately. You can check it out right here. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more automotive diagnostics and repair guides.